This tutorial will demonstrate how to use the Cine Camera Actor in Unreal Engine for still photography. The level used here is derived from the third person template with starter content included, but the functionality demonstrated here should be valid for any level. To create a scene here for demonstration purposes, we go to the starter content folder and drag out some static meshes from the props subfolder. We can drag out the share here and I'll press F to focus on it. We'll add three rocks in the background here. We'll hold Alt and drag to create a duplicate of it. We'll press E to rotate it a little, perhaps something like that, but perhaps to the back instead. And we make sure that we are in world space and then we can adjust the Z location of it. And then we can drag out a third duplicate and with pressing E we change the rotation mode and rotate it perhaps something like that. Press W to go back to location mode and perhaps position it even further down somewhere around there. And we can go to the starter content, we can go to the third person blueprint folder. And in the blueprint subfolder we can drag out the third person character. And we can press E to rotate and rotate him just slightly and position him a little further back perhaps. Here we have a mock-up scene for demonstration purposes. Now it is time to find a view that you like. By adjusting the camera of movement speed with the scroll wheel while holding right mouse button, we can fine tune the location and the orientation of the intended view. If we press G, we toggle game view, which will hide in editor overlays. To save a bookmark of your current view, hold control and press any of the number keys from 1 to 0 on your keyboard. This saves the current view to the given slot, which makes it easy to compare different views when picking your camera location. To go to the bookmark location and orientation, we simply press the number key again. So we have saved 2 here, 1 and 2. If you hold down right mouse button, you can also temporarily adjust the field of view with Z and C, respectively. This might be helpful for testing out an intended focal length even before a Cine Camera Actor has been created. When you let go of right mouse button, however, the field of view will be reset to the value set here, as in this case, 90 degrees horizontal field of view. Testing out the two previously made bookmarks, we find that perhaps we want a more centered one. We can save a bookmark here as well by holding control and pressing 3. You can pick any number you want, of course, on your keyboard. 1, 2, 3. Yes, perhaps this one is the one we want. If you go to the drop down menu, you can click Create Camera here and choose a Cine Camera Actor. This will create a Cine Camera Actor from the current view. This is an easy way of creating a new Cine Camera Actor, since the location and rotation values are already set to the orientation you have chosen. If you toggle G to disable Game View, you can show the camera mesh here. Another method is to go to Cinematics in the Place Actors pane and drag out a Cine Camera Actor but its transform will need to be set manually by you to conform to your intended view. We'll delete this so as only to keep the first one with the delete key. When a camera is selected, you get a preview of the camera view here. Often it is handy to pin it so as to keep the preview even when selecting other actors. The camera's location can be adjusted any way you see fit whether with the global or local coordinate space active, but for the rotation, it is important to be in local space, so as not to produce an excessive amount of Dutch angles. Generally, the roll angle along the x-axis should be avoided, unless Dutch angles are used consciously to disorient the viewer or convey that the story the camera tells might not be credible. You pitch the camera along the local y-axis and you yaw it along the local z-axis. 
The representation of float values for rotational angles might produce insignificant rounding errors, but the tolerance is generally smaller than what the eye is able to perceive. With look at tracking, you can force the camera's rotation to be oriented towards a specific object, maintaining this relative orientation even when the camera is moved. With look at tracking enabled, you must use the global coordinate space when moving the camera, because local space transforms get really, really wonky. Except for the local x-axis, which always will be pointing in the forward direction. The tracking point is the origin or pivot point of the tracked object, but this can be offset in the controls under relative offset. The film back setting offers many presets, and each one offers a unique sensor width and height, associated with the camera type of the real-life sensor dimensions it references, and the differences might seem like a big deal, but in essence it influences two things. The proportions between width and height define the aspect ratio of the camera, and this can be significant when your intended output is for 16 to 9 aspect ratio screens and you want to avoid the black borders of pillar boxing when viewing less widescreen content. The size of the sensor also determines the field of view for a given focal length. With a given focal length for the lens, a larger sensor will capture more of the view than a smaller sensor. And if you, as an example, want to use a given focal length of a reference photo, the field of view will only match the reference if the sensor size is defined as the same of that of the reference camera. Since we in this tutorial are outputting for a 16 to 9 aspect ratio format, but want to use focal length values reminiscent of still photography full frame DSLR cameras, we can choose the 16 to 9 DSLR option to slightly crop the full frame sensor vertically to fit into the intended aspect ratio. The lens settings here are more of a min-max limits nature since the actual focal length and aperture are set separately. But when you want to customize things beyond what is practically reasonable in real life, as defined by the universal zoom present here, remember that it is here you allow for it. If we first make sure that the camera is manually focused at the chair here, and then increase the current focal length as so as to constrain the field of view, if we then set the minimum f-stop to 0.2, and then adjust the current aperture to the same value, 0.2, while also making sure that we look through the camera in full screen by clicking here, and also to enable game view by making sure that the viewport is active and then pressing G. To reselect the camera, click in the world outliner. We can see that the lens simulated surpasses what physical glass lenses might possibly achieve, giving a sensationally narrow depth of field which not even diamond lenses could replicate. Like current aperture, current focal length can be set to any value within the bounds set in the lens settings. A short focal length will give a wide field of view and a more and more distorted perspective, while a long focal length will give a narrow field of view and the perspective lines will be more and more parallel. If we go far beyond what would be practically reasonable in the real world, we can simulate a lens with a focal length of 3 meters, making sure that the focal length is set to the intended value. If we exit the piloting of the Cine Camera Actor and press G to disable game view so as to see the camera mesh and then to go into local space and move the camera as far as we can. We can even emulate a pseudo autographic camera if we again make sure that the focus is set to the share here. And if we, since moving in the x direction, in the forward direction is unproblematic in local space with look at tracking enabled, but the other two axes are very problematic, we'll make sure that we're in world space mode again, and then we'll move the camera up. I think that this might be enough to showcase the effect, and then making sure that it's once again is focused at the chair.
we can see that we now have a pseudo autographic camera while keeping all the visual perks of a Cine camera actor. We'll undo these changes so as to revert the camera's position. Instead of manually clicking the eyedropper icon here to refocus the camera after removing it, we can make sure that the camera autofocuses on any actor. Perhaps it's more suitable to focus on the third person character. As with the look at tracking settings, the relative offset of the focus tracking can be adjusted. While the relative offset of the tracking focus is depending on the local space coordinates of the tracked actor, the focus offset is always oriented along the camera's forward x-axis, allowing you to fine-tune the depth of the focal point at any time. These are the CineCamera Actor specific settings which are uniquely set for each CineCamera Actor. Different CineCamera Actors can of course have identical settings set up, which happens naturally when you copy an existing actor by alt-dragging an existing one, or by having it selected and pressing Ctrl W, which will duplicate it in place with a 1 cm XY offset. The duplicate will initially have the same settings as the original, but they are not instances, and changes to one will not reflect upon the other. Thus, when we now continue from the camera-specific settings to the post-process settings, it is important to note that all post-process settings that we in this tutorial define for one camera can be globally set when using a post-process volume. If you go to the Place Actors pane and in the category Volumes, there's a post-process volume for you to drag out. A post-process volume, when set to Unbound, globally affects the whole level, while the same settings in the Cine Camera Actor only affects the given camera. The camera's post-processing settings takes precedence over the post-process volume settings, so it is entirely possible to have a global post-processing volume and override specific settings for individual cameras. However, for the scope of this Cine Camera Actor tutorial, we'll use the in-camera post-processing settings. Bloom affects how bright light sources are captured by the lens. Let us disable the look at tracking here and orient the camera in local space towards the sun, as well as setting the aperture to a very high value, which means a very small aperture and thus a very wide depth of field. Going back to the bloom settings and making sure to look in the Cine Camera Actor in full screen mode here, we can see that there is two different methods for producing bloom. The standard option uses a Gaussian blur solution to affect the whole screen space, and the computationally more expensive convolution method uses a more physically based method. The strong effect of the convolution method can be diminished in the advanced bloom settings, with convolution boost multiplier set to a lower value. Let's enable the look at tracking again to refocus on the scene. Exposure is all about the amount of light captured by the sensor. When photographing with a physical DSLR camera, exposure is a delicate matter, the result of the triadic balance between exposure time, aperture and ISO sensor sensitivity. But in Unreal Engine, while you can juggle with exposure defined by these three, by changing the metering mode to manual, and adjusting shutter speed, ISO and aperture, you can free yourself from this burden by using the auto exposure histogram method. Should you want to adjust exposure, you can offset it with the exposure compensation. Chromatic aberration, lateral chromatic aberration in this case, is an optical effect of physical lenses where high contrast areas give rise to RGB fringes with the effect more profound in the periphery than in the center of the image. With physical camera photography, these fringes are often edited out during developing of the photo, but in Unreal Engine, when subtly used, it can be one of those things which makes the render look more like a photograph. Dirt Mask enables a texture to make the lens seem dirty, but this only works when Bloom is set to standard. As with many post-processing settings, it looks most convincing when applied subtly.
Under camera, shutter speed and ISO only affect the exposure when set to manual mode and the rest of the settings are overridden by the camera settings above. Lens flares emulate the optical effect of bright light sources reflecting inside the lens. And with bookie shape, you can assign a texture to define the shape of the bookie. A subtler effect might be more convincing. Under image effects, you can define the vignette intensity of the lens. And with grain intensity, you can introduce grain if you want, although perhaps not a very aesthetic one. It is more physically correct to introduce a narrow depth of field by reducing the value of current aperture, thus widening the aperture of the lens, but a scene depth dependent Gaussian blur type of depth of field is also available here. White balance determines the neutral chromacity, affecting the relative intensity of red, green and blue values. With a temperature of 6500 Kelvin and a tint of zero, the neutral chromacity approximates the standard illuminant D65, used as white point by most standard color spaces, such as sRGB, Adobe RGB, Profoto RGB, Rec 709 and Rec 2020. To make things a little complicated, the tone mapper in Unreal Engine uses the Academy Color Encoding System, or ACES color space, which uses a white point of D60, 500 Kelvin warmer than D65. Nevertheless, this 500 Kelvin offset seems to be compensated for by design, since if we place an exceptionally warm light of precisely 1700 Kelvin and adjust the white balance of the camera, to be precisely 1700 Kelvin as well, then the warm glow of the light is accurately and perfectly neutralized. An offset of 500 Kelvin, which the discrepancy between D65 and D60 would suggest, is awfully off. And even an offset of uh, 100 Kelvin in any direction makes for a less neutral white balance for the light. Thus it is safe to assume that 6500 Kelvin is the true neutral value in Unreal Engine, whether internally offset or not. While keeping the white balance neutral is sensible if you are exporting images and post-process in an external program, Unreal Engine is a most competent post-processing software in itself, and if you author your final image in Engine, feel free to experiment. Lowering the temperature of the camera's white balance will neutralize warmer lights with a relatively low Kelvin temperature as blue values are boosted and red values diminished. Raising the temperature will neutralize cooler lights with a relatively high Kelvin temperature as red values are boosted and blue values diminished. A lower tint will boost green values and diminish both red and blue values. A higher tint will boost both red and blue values, yielding a purple tint while diminishing green values. While the white balance temperature setting gives great artistic license to shape the feeling of your render, a side note tip is that for the northern hemisphere, the light temperature of average midday light is 5400 Kelvin, which might be a good starting point for exterior scenes. For the next four categories, global, shadows, midtones and highlights, identically named settings adjust the same aspects of color grading, but depending on the category only affects a certain range in luminance. Settings under global affect the whole scene. Under shadows, only pixels under a certain luminance cutoff value, shadows max, are affected. Under midtones, only pixels over the shadows max and the highlights min are affected. Under highlights, only pixels with a luminance over highlights min are affected. The settings themselves are straightforward enough. Saturation defines the colorfulness in proportion to brightness, where a value of zero will produce a grayscale image, 
A slightly more muted image might contribute to a sense of realism, especially if assets in the scene have overly saturated textures. Contrast increases or diminishes the difference between pixels of high luminance and those of low. By increasing the contrast by a small amount, we assist the eye in perceiving meaningful surfaces and their borders. Gamma defines the characteristics of the difference between different luminance levels. If you decrease the gamma, pixels of medium luminance, the midtones, get pushed into the shadows and highlights, depending on their original luminance. If you increase the gamma, the shadows and highlights get crushed into the midtones. Gain adjusts the intensity of the white point without changing its chromaticity, compressing or expanding the range of brightness in the image. Offset adjusts the intensity of the black point, generally leading to a darkened or washed out image. Like stated before, all of these settings can be adjusted globally or for a certain luminance range. One thing we usually like to do is to set the gain of the shadows to 1.4, as so as to increase the luminance of most dark areas and make shadows less harsh. You can experiment with all these parameters to your heart's content. Under miscellaneous, you can tint the scene color with any color, and if you pick an HSV value of more than 1, the tint will also brighten the scene accordingly. Using a lookup table, or LUT, will drastically or subtly change the color grading of the scene, depending on the LUT chosen. Remember that if previously made color grading is more than subtle, then the resulting look of the LUT might not be what the author intended. You can always check what looks best by toggling the adjusted setting, like the white balance temperature for this scene. Nevertheless, your color grading, together with the effect of the LUT, might be precisely what you want. There are four lookup tables included in the engine, but you can easily import more, and they will be properly read as long as their texture group is set to color lookup table. Chris R has made some freely available LUTs for commercial and non-commercial use with optional crediting. There's a link in the description. If you change the color grading LUT intensity, you can blend between no effects and full effects, which is often practical when the effect of the LUT is interesting but has too much of an impact. The settings under Film are set to correspond with the Academy Color Encoding System standard film stock, but can be adjusted to change the appearance of the image. By adjusting the slope, you modulate the difference between luminance levels, primarily in the midtones. The toe has a similar effect, but with a focus on shadows. The shoulder, to no surprise, works similarly with a focus on highlights. Black and white clipping adjust where black and white levels are cut off, respectively. An adjusted black point clipping offers very dramatic results, while white clipping is more subtle, if noticeable at all. When you are satisfied with both the framing of the image and the look of it, you can click High Resolution Screenshot to capture it. The Screenshot Size Multiplier will determine the resolution of the image. If you want to increase this, please do so one step at a time and test at each increment, because sooner or later, depending on the video memory of your graphics card, the setting will cause a crash. By default, clicking on the camera button will save the image as an 8-bit PNG. But if you want a 16-bit half-float OpenEXR image file less prone to gradient banding, you can enable include buffer visualization targets and make sure that right HDR format visualization targets is also enabled. This will separately include all render buffer channels, such as the unlit base color, the metallic and the roughness masks, the scene depth and the world normal. 
but if you do not intend to use these as layer masks in further post-processing, then you can delete these, and keep the suffixless one. Bear in mind that OpenEXR is a linear color space file format, with a linear gamma of 1.0, accurate for light calculations, but not as we usually perceive colors on a screen. To revert the gamma to 2.2, as we see it in the Unreal Engine editor, we apply a gamma of 0.45, approximating 2.2 raised to the power of minus 1. Thus, we have a 16-bit image developed from the Cine Camera Actor in Unreal Engine. Remember that all post-process settings, which we now have demonstrated in the Cine Camera Actor, can be set in an unbound post-process volume instead, which is recommended if you use several cameras and want to achieve a coherent look without backtracking every adjustment set for every camera. Thank you for your time.